coyotes, scientifically known as Canis latrans, are distinctive members of the canine family and are native to North America. The coyote is smaller than its relative, the wolf. They originally lived in the plains of western North American territory, but with the decline of their rivals, wolves and cougars, they began to spread across the continent. Today, they are highly acclimatized and widespread throughout the American landscape. These animals exhibit remarkable adaptability, and there are 19 subspecies. Males weigh between 8 and 20 kilograms, or 18 to 44 pounds, and females between 7 and 18 kilograms, or 15 to 40 pounds, depending on the area that they live in and which subspecies they belong to. They can live as individuals, as a pack of relatives, or as a pack of unrelated individuals. With their keen intelligence, versatility, and predatory abilities, they have been able to thrive in a variety of terrains, from deserts to forests. If they are so multifaceted in North America, a particular question arises. Could coyotes survive in Africa? To answer this question, we need to examine both the biology of these animals and the diverse geographical conditions of the African continent. The introduction of the North American coyote to the African continent would likely have a significant environmental consequence. Due to the different geographic conditions and ecosystem dynamics, it might be difficult for them to survive in African landscapes. However, as the coyote is adaptable and opportunistic, some individuals might succeed in establishing populations, especially in regions with similar environmental conditions to their native territory. So, let us take a closer look at some of the most important factors. Africa's climate varies greatly due to its vast size and diverse geography. In general, there are several climatic zones, including tropical rainforests near the equator, dry deserts in the north and south, and savannas in between. As a result, it has a rich biodiversity of biomes, from the vast savannas of the Serengeti to the dense rainforests of the Congo Basin. Temperatures vary across the continent, from scorching heat in the Sahara to mild conditions in the coastal regions. Rainfall patterns are also very different. Some areas experience heavy rainfall, while others suffer from prolonged droughts. However, coyotes are known to tolerate a wide range of environmental conditions. Although they could potentially live in different African regions, certain biomes offer better opportunities for their existence. While they may initially struggle in extremely hot or humid environments, Individuals with a genetic predisposition for heat tolerance may acclimate over time. Coyotes generally prefer open environmental niches, so terrain such as savannas, grasslands, shrublands, semi-arid regions, and agricultural areas where prey and suitable shelter are abundant may be suitable for them. Nevertheless, areas with moderate temperatures and access to water sources would be best suited for their persistence. These areas provide ample opportunity for hunting, and den building, which are essential for their existence and reproduction. Coyotes may have difficulty in densely forested areas or regions with extreme temperatures or high precipitation. These environments may limit their ability to find suitable food and shelter. African wildlife is equally diverse and includes iconic megafauna such as lions, elephants, and giraffes, as well as a plethora of smaller species. Hunter-killer dynamics are complex with top hunters such as lions and hyenas exerting a significant influence. Coyotes are known for their behavioral flexibility. They can adjust their hunting strategies, diet, and social structures to available resources and environmental conditions. This behavioral plasticity could be an advantage in the face of new challenges posed by the African landscape. One of the most important factors influencing their persistence in the continent is the availability of suitable prey. They are opportunistic carnivores and can hunt different types of prey. Their diet is diverse and ranges from insects, amphibians, reptiles, small mammals, and rodents to birds, and even roe deer. There is also evidence that they can occasionally eat fruit and vegetables and even honey. This broad palate could serve them well in Africa, where an abundance of potential prey awaits. In African territory, Coyotes could probably feed on small to medium-sized reptiles, lizards and snakes, mammals such as rodents, mice, small antelope species, dikers, steenbocks, dick dicks, and birds, guinea fowl, rancollins, other small bird species. 
They may also feed on carrion and occasionally hunt domestic animals. Although Africa is home to a variety of mammal species, coyotes would have to compete with native carnivores for food provisions. However, due to their opportunistic feeding habits and ability to utilize a wide range of prey, they could facilitate their establishment in African territories. Depending on the region, these animals could compete with native hunters such as hyenas, jackals, and big cats such as lions and leopards. In addition, human activities such as hunting and habitat destruction could pose a significant threat to their existence. Although there are no direct relatives of the coyote native to Africa, there are similar species such as the African golden wolf or Canis anthus and various jackal species. These animals occupy similar ecological niches and could potentially compete with coyotes for vital supplies if introduced to the continent. Furthermore, coyotes and African jackals share some similarities in terms of terrain, behavior, and size. But whether they would be friends, partners, enemies, or rivals depends largely on their interactions in specific environments. Both coyotes and African jackals are opportunistic predator species that eat an omnivorous diet. They also have similar social structures and often form monogamous breeding pairs or small family groups. With the incorporation into the African continent, there are regions where the ranges of coyotes and jackals may overlap due to human-induced habitat changes or natural dispersal. In areas where their ranges largely overlap, competition could lead to antagonistic interactions, such as terrestrial disputes or direct confrontations over food. In some cases, coyotes and jackals may have reciprocal or commensal relationships with each other or with other species. For example, both species may scavenge the prey of larger carnivorous predators and benefit from the remains. There are also cases where different canid species such as coyotes and badgers in North America hunt together, suggesting that similar behavior is also possible in Africa. There are documented cases of hybridization between closely related canid species, raising the possibility of interspecific mating between coyotes and jackals. In areas where their ranges overlap, hybridization could occur, resulting in hybrid offspring with intermediate traits. In terms of reproduction and population dynamics, coyotes are prolific breeders that can quickly replenish their populations under favorable conditions. If introduced to Africa and given sufficient nourishment, they could quickly build up breeding populations. Their reproductive capacity, with litters up to 12 young, ensures rapid population growth, a crucial factor for survival in new environments. In addition, their social structure, often characterized by flexible family groups, encourages cooperation in hunting and defense. However, their reproductive success is likely to be influenced by factors such as competition with native hunters, disease dynamics, and human activities. As with all large carnivores, the presence of coyotes in Africa could lead to conflicts with human communities, especially in areas where livestock farming is prevalent. Mitigating these conflicts would be crucial for the long-term coexistence of coyotes and local communities. They could potentially utilize niches that have been abandoned by native apex predators, especially in areas where human activities have disturbed natural habitats. However, the potential impact on the ecosystem and the consequences for management should be carefully considered before any attempts at integration are made. The incorporation of non-native species often leads to ecological imbalance and competition with native fauna. In a word, the introduction of coyotes could lead to a disruption of the local food chain due to their opportunistic predatory characteristics. Their presence could also affect the behavior and distribution of herbivores, alter vegetation patterns, and impact plant communities, but also lead to the decline or even extinction of some animal species. Non-native predators can also introduce new diseases or parasites to which native species are not immune. Consequently, they can affect biodiversity, potentially causing cascading effects, and disrupt the delicate balance of the ecosystem, which can lead to unpredictable ecological consequences. Therefore, proper risk assessment and management strategies are crucial to mitigate these impacts. The question remains, can coyotes survive in Africa? Their resourcefulness suggests that they could carve out a niche for themselves in certain environments. However, numerous challenges must be overcome. From competition with native predators to human-induced pressures, adjustments will be crucial, both in the physiological traits and behavioral strategies. 
Ultimately, the fate of these animals in Africa depends on a balance of ecological dynamics and evolutionary processes. Overall, while there are many challenges and uncertainties associated with the introduction of these animals into Africa, their biological flexibility may allow them to establish viable populations in certain regions of the continent. What do you think? Could coyotes survive in Africa? Leave a comment to argue your opinion. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.